Two Dodge dealer, the spirit of excitement show is in Dodge Daytona with a racy engine, sleek design, sports suspension, and more. Although with all that, Daytona does offer something less than many sports cars, price. Get an exciting Daytona for as low as $95.49. Or get a sporty Daytona ES, a great value starting at $10,549 after $1,000 cash back. Dodge Daytona, a sports car you can afford. See your Dodge dealer, where the spirit always shows. Day after New Year's Eve, well, New Year's Day rather, uh, January what the second, and um, got my little stimulus check. <laughs> so I'm heading back down to Watson's. We're gonna pick up this Dodge Daytona. I called him. We kind of worked out a deal uh, over the phone, and. Uh, the owner of the junkyard is going to be down here. Uh, what's that? Saturday. So they're going to be open for a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I got the trailer. And uh, he said we'll use the forklift to pick it up. I I recommend that we just bag up to it and scoop it right up on the trailer with a you know chain horse or something. But he said it's probably kind of muddy. I mean, it is kind of raining today. It's been raining for the last two days. Um, so what a better time to go get a car out of the scrap yard. So uh, we're going to go and uh, try and get this thing loaded up. Hopefully uh, he picks it up with the forklift. He don't damage nothing. Um, it's sitting on flat, which I brought the air tank. And I'm going to uh, try to air up the three tires, I think. Uh, the donut that's on it, is, uh, it's got air in it. I'm gonna try and look around so can I find a matching rim, but that's the only Dodge Daytona he's got. So, we're gonna go down here and see if we can get this thing loaded up safely and uh, get it back to the shop and uh, go over it and see can we get it to fire up. Um, I don't have a key. He said he will look and see if he's got the key. Um, of course, I don't have any title, but being it's a uh, 89, I mean, I can get a title for it. I mean, that ain't a big issue, but he said he would look and see. But uh, these Dodge Daytonas, they are very rare. I've been looking at them all over the holiday season, and uh, you don't find very many of them anymore. I've seen, I think, a turbo model one. Uh, it has some turbo issues. I think he said the intercooler or something caught on fire or the pressure relief valve, and it burnt the wires. And it was like, I think five hours away from where I live. And uh, he said it would run, but it didn't have no power. I was like, eh, I don't feel like getting that. Then I found another uh, ES model uh, that ran, but it also had turbo issues. So the turbo ones, I guess, wasn't very reliable unless the turbo was actually working right and it got service like it's supposed to. Uh, I did find an 85 model that needed an engine rebuild. It was the Shelby edition. Like I say, he wanted like two grand for it and the engine was blowed up. So, and it was kind of like five, six hours away from the house. So, I mean, these things are rare. I mean, it's Dodge Daytona, I know. Uh, some people probably don't like them. They're a typical front wheel drive. Uh, but the good thing with this one is it's a five speed. Uh, if it was automatic, I'd be like, eh, automatic would be. But this one is a five-speed, and everything is there. Now, I don't know the condition of the um, clutch or nothing like that, of course. I know uh, everything is there five-speed-wise. Uh, I think in the last video, uh, I did turn it over by hand. It wasn't reading any oil on the dish stick, which I don't know if the pan's got a hole in it or leaked out. Uh, it's been sitting since 05. Uh, I don't know. I mean, my guess is as good as your guess. So I'm going to try and do some filming while I'm down here. It's, it's kind of raining right now. It's, it's sprinkling kind of heavily. Well, <laughs> heavily. <laughs> heavy. <laughs> 
and uh, I don't want to get the phone on my camera uh, wet, so I'll try and do as much film as I can. Just digging this thing out, which is not hard to dig out. It's kind of sitting on the front row of the uh, yard, so it shouldn't be that hard. He didn't want me to pull my trailer back there. He's scared I was gonna get stuck, which is right by a gravel road, but it's his junkyard, so I ain't gonna argue with him. So. Anyway, I'm gonna get down here and uh, I'm gonna get down here and try and get this thing, and uh, I'll uh, get back with y'all. And see, they got it in the air back there, so it's starting to rain. And uh, I'm just finna bag up to it and uh, let him set it down on the trailer with the forklift. So let me get out and uh, I'll get back. You too, baby. Set her down. Whoa, whoa. It's gonna hit the fender. Huh? Your force gonna hit the fender. The yeah. I think we're gonna set it off and just push it up on there because my force gonna hit this fender over here before I can come down. Alright. I didn't get to fly it off, but I'm gonna pull a trailer. So after getting the Daytona loaded. He told me that this old K car up here uh, should have a good engine in it. They brought it in and it was running, uh, but it's not uh, locked up. I can take the alternator. You watch down there. You can see it turn. So I think he said he drained the oil out of them for environmental reasons, because this one's not showing oil on the dipstick either. But uh. It's an 88 model. It's the same year. And it has a key switch. Let's see what's on the inside. I told him that I'll probably get a uh, key switch. Which this one has one that has a key in it. And it's not even connected. It looks like somebody popped a column or something. So I guess I'll get the key switch out of this one. It's kind of in a bad spot. Can't open the door all the way. Maybe we'll go down the hill. This one's got 36,000. I well, wonder how many times that rolled over. Looking at the head, I don't know if somebody's replaced it in the past, but uh. It looks clean on that side. So, I'm going to try and get that key switch out. And uh, if not, we'll go down to where the other cars are. On my way back down the hill, I seen this uh, box Chevy. I think this is a 79 box Chevy two-door. Got some uh, whiskey dents. But uh, it's all here. It's even got a key switch in it. Look at that. Cha -cha 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 Showing 839,000 miles. This would be a good car to fix up. Of course, you had to get the dents out. Look, it's the Griswolds. <laughs> Oh, LTD wagon. Let's see what's on here. Ooh, squirrels has had a heyday. Got the old 302 5.0 liter. The old fake wood grain on the side. 
I had the camera out, but it started to rain, and I was like, no. Ugh. She won't open. Uh-oh. Booby traps. Country Squire. This door is locked. And then, of course, we got the old Chevrolet wood grain. Look at that. Another box Chevy. Look at that. One one in the dashboard. Nice front seats. Little work boots back there. Look at that. Those seats are can be cleaned up. Roof rack. So I'm gonna head on to the Chrysler Division. Another booby trap. And uh, like I said, all these cars are for sale, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna close this up, head on down the hill. And we'll see what else we can ponder up on. So I found this, um, I think it's an 89 or 90 Dodge Sundance, a Chrysler Sundance, Dodge Sundance. And it is a four-speed car. So at least I know there's another transmission is for the Daytona. Steven got one of the old school flip-up sunroofs in it that usually leak. Leave a comment below if you guys ever had one of these jewels. Good thing about it is a two-door. I found a key switch, but I couldn't get the key out. It's like hung in there. And this has got the same engine at 02.5, I believe. Let's see, is it locked up? Ah, it won't turn. Something's locked up. Got oil in it. They didn't drain this one. Hmm. So, at least we know there's a, I think it's a four speed or five speed transmission. Should be the same as the Daytona. Oh man, this headliner sucks. I can't tell if it's a. I think it's a four speed. I do need a wheel. I might grab one of these tires off one of them. So, anyway. I'm going to keep searching. So here she is, folks. It made it back to my side of town. And uh, we're up here at the car wash. I'm going to try and blow off some of this old tree sap. Hope we don't blow the mirror off. Which is still good. I had some sheet metal screws holding it. i got to find out why this door won't stay closed. But I talked to him and he said that uh, he don't know how long this car has been at the yard. Um, he said it might have been left there by the previous junkyard owners. Because uh, he said there was a lot of cars left there when he uh, bought the place. And back in 0405, they came through and they scrapped a bunch of cars. And he don't remember if this got left there before that or it came after but uh gas top's not on that's gonna need some <laughs> there we go <laughs> i did notice at the bottom that uh the converter is missing so someone has cut the converter off of it. Pretty solid at the bottom. 
gas tank is still in it, which is good. Uh, which I couldn't see because it was sitting on the ground. The tires did take some air. I didn't put any in the donut, but the other three tires did take some air. So what I'm going to do is uh, just kind of hit it with the car wash. I don't want to get too much water on it and get inside, even though it don't matter. It's been sitting there for decades with the door half open. And uh, then we'll get it back to the shop and get it unloaded and uh, get it inside and uh, check it out some more. I got to get a key switch up for it. Didn't have a key. But he said he was going to search for the paperwork back at his uh, house where he keeps all his titles. So even if that, I can get a title for it. Uh, it's an older model car and they're real easy. I think it's, it might be 25 years old. I don't know. 89. I have to do the math on that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, something's up with this door hinge. I don't know if they took something off of it, but the body doesn't have any uh, dents or anything, and it's just all the clear coats peeling off of it. Dodge with their crappy paint jobs back in the day, and the rear seal up here is shrunk. But anyway, it's starting to rain again. It's been raining off and on all day. I'm going to shoot some... Uh, soaking water at it and uh, then we'll uh, see what it turned out to be after that. It ain't gonna be any prettier but it will get all this uh, tree sap and mold off of it. So. What's going on? So we got her all nice and cleaned up. I tried to blow off as much clear coat as I could because it was peeling real bad. So up under that is burgundy paint. And um, I tried to get as much tree sap off I could, but the stupid change machine up here at the car wash don't work. So I had to dig and scrape for some quarters. But uh, yeah, I was able to get most of the nastiness off of it. So now it's starting to look like a Dodge Daytona, all except for the headlights. <laughs> but uh, not bad car though. I can say the body is pretty straight. It's got like some, some probably some little dings down the side of it. That probably happened at the junkyard. The car is next to it. Uh, doors getting open and uh, hitting it. But uh, well, other than that, uh, it turned out pretty good. Oops. I'm trying to adjust the camera light. But, uh... He was going to pick it up at the rear with the forklift, and I was like, nah, don't do that, because you're going to mess up the rear uh, valence or violence or ground effect, or whatever you call it. It's already got a crack right here. So, I said, I'll just air the tires up and uh, winch it up there rest away because he couldn't set it all the way down but uh the tires actually held air i mean that was uh, a shock so we're missing one rim and uh, i gotta fix that driver side door i got that tire propped up there for now trying to keep some of the water out and uh other than that fix the mirror driver side door and uh get the matching rim which I hope I can find. Oh, and I got to fix the driver's side seat. Other than that, body-wise and interior-wise, I think it's all pretty much there. So, other than the engine, I say this might be a win. So we're going to get it in out of this cold, rainy weather. And uh, we're going to uh, get it in some dry heat and uh, see if we can get this thing fired up. So now I got this thing to the shop. I was able to get it off the trailer and I forgot <laughs> that the steering column is locked. So I've already removed the airbag and uh, went to the old parts store and picked up a new key cylinder. 
with two keys and uh this airbag was really freaking me out because it's so dry right <laughs> the middle of it is like cracked and I had to remove these four nuts to get it off the stern column and I was like man I hope this old airbag don't, go, don't come flying out so I gotta look like someone's already been whacking on that I gotta get this steering wheel off so I can get in there and uh, there's like a clock spring back here for the uh, airbag and so I'm pretty sure on these models here you have to uh, take all that out to get the switch out so I hope I can hit it with a hammer now that I have to get my uh, air chisel out so I'm going to give it a couple whack she don't look like she's going to budge at all I guess I'm going to have to get the uh, air chisel with a punch on it, probably. <laughs> Almost knocked the stirring column loose. That was, <laughs> that was interesting. So, let me get an air chisel. Hopefully my air hose will reach through this door. Starting to rain again. Man, things glued on there. not come off of there. I guess I'm going to have to get a steering wheel puller next, which I've got one of those. She ain't budging. I have to just go ahead and get a snare wheel puller and uh, get that nut off of there. So let me round up one of those. Alright, 
So I got steering wheel remover tool. Yeah. Trying to beat the rain. What is that? A uh, 15? Hopefully, we can get it off here now. Don't want to run them screws in too far because the clock spring is back there. For the airbag, you'll crush it. So you want to just barely put them in there. Yeah. Works right when you do it with the right tools. So now we'll take the steering wheel over tool back off. Just the rain just hold down just like it is, just sprinkling until we uh that wire was broke. I really hate you have to pull all this off just to change the two switch. So now we got two Phillips head screws we need to remove. got rain for the next couple days so I really want to get it inside take this off be careful with this this might be a hard to find item I didn't know they had airbags back in 89 Oh, it just keeps getting more fun. We got to get the plate thing that the push in plate remover. It's kind of like a GM. So you got to get the tool to push this plate down so we can get in there. And there's a Torx head screw that removes the key switch so there's a snap ring behind this plate well if that would stay down we can steer it that, that is actually the lock pin that sticks up through these little teeth but I know once I go to turn it it's going to jump back up but I already got it down so I might as well just go ahead and um, do it the right way and but you had to take the turn signal thing off. So I'm wondering if it'll let me steer it just a little bit just to get it inside. What you guys think? Well, as soon as I turn back, it's gonna lock. I say, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and push down on that thing and get that plate out of the way. Good thing I still had these tools. <laughs> well, that screws on there. Like that. And then you screw in on this wing nut. You want to make sure that lock pin is 
going through the little teeth and you just push in and then you get a small screwdriver or a pick and you have to get that little clip out of there. Let me grab one of those. suck having to walk back and forth but hey I gotta do what I gotta do uh oh clip is a job to get out of there like a hog, what do they call it, a hog ring clip? Probably gonna have to get two, two pairs of picks to get it out of there. Oh. Let me get a flathead screwdriver. thing is So once you get the little clippy thing out, you can release the pressure and uh, spin this off of here. Now you can see the little snap ring. Uh, Trying to get you over there. That little hog ring thing. That's the little hog ring that you have to get out and it sits in the groove inside of this little plate. And you have to make sure this goes back on there right. So we'll remove that and we might be able to sneak back there and get that uh get this turn signal thing off. So I see the torques. So I know you gotta take this whole assembly. Let me get a Torx uh, bit. See, can I sneak back between here and get that screw out of there and then we can pull the cylinder out. Yes, a second. I really don't want to disturb the turn signal stuff if I don't have to. I'd rather just get down in there and get that screw out. I think if you just turn the turn signal on, there she goes.
Only thing is stopping it. Whoop. Well, I think we're going to have to take it all the way out because this little yellow plate is blocking it. You can see there's a torque screw back up in there. But this yellow plate behind the turn signal uh, thing is blocking me from getting it all the way out. So. I'm going to have to uh, take that whole plate out of there in order for me to uh, get that out. I really hate to, but so I'm thinking you take the handle off. Take that. Well, that's not even the handle. That's just turn. So when you turn, it clicks. Makes turn signals go back. Oh, it's got three screws. those three screws out so this thing oh you have to take off the flasher button man you gotta disassemble all of this this is ridiculous look at how it is to change the key switch on these old cars you take the flasher button out Whole assembly and move out the way so you can get in there and pull that screw out. I'm thinking that's the screw. I might be wrong. I think that's actually the screw that holds the. No, that ain't the screw. That's the screw that holds the uh, the top part of your steering column together. What it is, it's. <clears throat> It's a push pin you have to push. Say it's been a long time. Let's get this way. They don't make this easy for you to work on. I think on the back of this switch, you have to push this little this little button. One of these little buttons you have to push. I think it's this little button right here. Then the switch will slide out of there. But you have to take out Oh, I see the button. Just one of those pieces is your key buzzer, which we gotta get some needle nose. So yeah, you have to go in here and take out this little plastic thing. And what it does, it rides on back of this plate. So when you put the key in there, I think that's the key buzzer, I believe. So you pull it out, then way back up in there, you can barely see that button.
it's like a little slot back up in there that little slot where that screw hole is you stick a flathead in there and that will make the uh, key switch come out There we go. It's out. So you have to push in on this little button with a screwdriver. It comes right out of there. So now we can put our new switch in. It should just slide. Back in. You gotta get it where that button is. There we go. Should have sprayed some oil or something in there. It is kind of, kind of stiff. I guess because it's been sitting up so long. <laughs> Probably squirt a little PV blaster down in there to get uh, get the turn a little better. But what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put all this stuff back together and then we'll get it in the shop and we'll go from there. Because it is cold and raining. All right, so I got the steering wheel all back together after getting it inside out of the rain and cold. Uh, I got the hatch open, as you can see, typical shocks don't work. Uh, really not nothing back here, just a bunch of junk. The cover that covers the trunk and um, stuff like that. So I guess we'll be getting new shocks for the uh, trunk. That thing is heavy too. But I had to uh, play with the little button and I just got it propped up with a crowbar. So I didn't hook the steering, uh, steering wheel harness back up for the airbag because um, it's been getting rained in and I'm scared if I hook it up, it might short out and blow out. So I just left a uh, little harness that goes up to it unplugged. So now we got a key switch, steering's unlocked. I did find out what's wrong with the door. Someone had rigged it up. The bushings just went bad. And they got a screw in there. Instead of just buying the bushings, they got a small screw in there and they took the pin out and at the bottom it's wore out. So really this top hinge is what's wore out on it. I'm gonna try and find a new one. Uh, I think it's got a crack right in the weld. But they took the pin out of there, so we'll try and find a new one of those. I did find a bushing kit, but I haven't just sat down and looked. Uh, what else? So I picked up a good tire out there and I took that old donut off down there. So this is just a temporary tire till I find the original uh, factory ES wheel. Hopefully I can find it one of those. And up under the hood, I noticed that uh, they cut the converter off, but they cut it off so far back, it's right over the top of the uh, rack and pinion, and they accidentally cut uh, there's like a little small pipe down there they cut. And I noticed uh, when I was pushing it inside, it was leaking power steering fluid out. I don't know if I can get the 
light down there. Good enough or not. That pipe is like a tube. Right there. You can see it. It's so hard to focus in on it. But they kind of sliced it when they cut the uh, pipe off of it. And you can see the pipe just stopping right there. So I'm going to have to get a converter put on it. But I'm going to crank it first. It's going to be super duper loud. Um, I don't know whether to just put a piece of straight pipe in there or just a converter. But the oxygen sensor is up on the manifold, which is good. There's the plug for it. So, other than that, like I said in the last video, it's fairly complete. Uh, I didn't hit the brake pedal because I'm scared that the brake's gonna lock up. <laughs> it's got a throttle body. Um, I haven't stuck a battery in it yet. I gotta get a battery for it. And, um,. Either I'm gonna take the power steering line off, I mean the power steering belt off and crank it or try to crank it or go up under there and fix that metal pipe. I really hate for it to backfire and catch that power steering fluid on fire. So I gotta figure that out. I guess this is the ground wire. Somebody robbed the uh, terminal off of it. So with that being said, I'm going to sign off right now on it. Um, I'm going to call it a night. It's been a long day messing with it. As far as uh, getting it loaded, walking around looking for spare parts, getting it to the car wash, cleaning it off, getting it home, getting it off the trailer, getting the tire on it, getting the key switch to work, getting it inside. So. I'm just going to sign off right here and uh, we'll get back on it uh, another day. Maybe tomorrow we'll get back on it. I got some other things to do. And uh, at least we got it here at the house. We ain't got to worry about nobody stealing parts off of it. And uh, we'll uh, go from there. So we'll just holler at y'all next time. And uh, y'all hit that like button. Hit that notification button. And uh, tell your friends and subscribe. Uh, there's more coming this year, uh, more projects, more will it run, and uh, just keep your eyes open. All right.